What's up, YouTube? Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Full Efficient channel. Today is July 20th, 2018. It is going to be my outing number 88 of this year. And this is another episode of Your Review with EPF, where I go to public bodies of water, all right, testing yours that I have never used before. Although in this video, before we do some fishing, oh, I'm going to be doing a lot of fishing today. But before that, I just wanted to tell you guys a cool story. So grab a popcorn, man. This is a really good story, fishing related, of course, and it is based in true events, all right? So this story happens in the 1930s. Just a, just a dude in his local lake, chilling for a day, rowing around when he suddenly sees something really cool in the water he sees something extraordinary and what he sees is pretty much big fish charging towards schools of smaller fish he looks at it very attentively and he starts to notice that when those big fish charge in those schools of little fish some of them eventually get injured they stay suspended in the water, a little bit motionless. And that's when, as you guys probably have guessed, right? The big fish comes back, charges again, and right? It gobbles it up and gets a nice free meal. So this young guy is just watching this stuff in his lake and suddenly he has a really cool idea, right? He is a guy full of creativity. He gets the idea that he wants to make something from scratch that resembles a wounded fish to try to fool those fish to bite it. And then he goes back home, he gets a big piece of cork, and he gets his knife, and he starts carving it out. Once he carves it out, he uses a little bit of sandpaper to smooth the edges, and he got his first ever model. He wraps that model around tin foil from chocolate bars that he had eaten before. And to make sure that the cork doesn't really get bad and soggy in the water, to make sure that the tin foil doesn't destroy itself submerged in water, check this out. He melts negatives from photographs and he pours them, okay, the melted material on his model to serve it, to, to make it like a protective coat. Isn't that cool? And that is when his first ever lure was born. The year was 1936. The name of the angler was Laurie Rapala. And the name of the lake, I believe it was Lake Payani in Finland. Isn't this a cool story? And I mean, of course, he went out back later to Lake Payani, casting his lure. And did he catch fish? Oh boy, he caught so many fish that everyone around the area started to hear about his accomplishments, right? His name grew. His product grew and the brand was born. The rest of the story, well, EPF doesn't really need to tell you about it. You guys know it. 82 years later, 2018, very few people who fish hard in the fishing community have never heard about the brand Rapala before, right? They're a world-renowned brand. And in this video, episode two of your review with EPF, this is exactly what we're doing. We're going to be reviewing one of their lures, all right? In particular, the Rapala x Rep XR4. I got four models with me here today. I got them in rainbow trout color, silver, yellow perch, and even one model called the Hot Mustard Muddler, okay? XR, it stands for the model, x Rep, and the number four, it stands for the size. There's the XR6, 8, 10, Bigger the number, bigger the size. As far as I know, this is the smallest x rap model in the market. So today we are going very, very finesse here in this public canal where I am at, right? Where when you fish bodies of water that are highly pressured, it is always a plus to go finesse on it. You guys know all about that. So we're gonna tie this on. And the story is that this is supposed to imitate uh, wounded fish in the water. I have never used this size before. I got one on right here, yellow perch, 
model to try to match the hatch. I have seen yellow perch, the Perca flavicens, in this canal. I'm using the same equipment that I have used in my previous uh, lure review video, all casking. And the main question is, does this really work? How's the action? Does it catch fish? Well, stay tuned and those shall find out. Oh God, what is that? Oh man, our first catch of the day is a pumpkin seed. Bro, I saw something down there on the rappel. <laughs> I saw something down there and I thought, wow, wow that looks like a, you know. Nah, man, it was just a little pumpkin seed, the Lepomis gibosus, check that out, huh? On the little yellow perch rapala, about one third of its size. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I have to say, I expected our first catch of the day today to actually be a little bass and not exactly a pumpkin seed, but I'll take it. I mean, look how beautiful the pumpkin seed is, right, as a species. It is certainly a very gorgeous type of fish. Man, there's this fish down here that I really want to catch, and uh, it's being tough. Get it, boy! Got him. What is it? Oh, it's a red breast sunfish. I thought it was a different type of sunfish. I've been trying to catch it down there. Look at that. Lepomis auditus. Nailed the back of the Rapala, too. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So apparently, the XR4 can catch even the smallest species down there I mean smaller species for sure you know at this point I would really expect to catch some bass you know some other stuff but the panfish can nibble at it too oh oh ah oh, you've got to be kidding me man Yo, pan fishing with Rapala's XR. This should be the name of this video. Came out too, so aggressive and hit it like that. I don't know about the bass and the pickerel in this video, folks, but I mean, you know, the sunfish at least, as you guys can see, is more than willing to play with us. The only downside of this little Rapala's is the unhooking. Wow, it's, it can be brutal, especially when the little sunfish inhale all three of the treble hooks oh what the oh man another sunfish and as you guys can see look at this huh it's a red breast swiped at it full force there's a little bass down there that i was trying to catch oh man he inhaled this treble hook have to do some surgery here let's see ah, smaller treble hooks are quite troublesome to unhook all right got one out got two out got three out ah, there we go as well as i was saying i'm trying to catch a little bass that is down there and he just spooked the bass <laughs> man the bass didn't hit it the sunfish hit it been fishing the canal for about two hours now. The grind is quite real, no joke. I, I knew it was going to be a grind over here because you know the amount of fish is not really, really high. But I prefer challenges like this when you go out and you never know, you know, what size fish or what type of fish is going to hit, right? So I've been grinding here for two hours, and I got good news, and I got bad news. The good news is we're using the right bait. There's a lot of bait fish in this canal. There's some type of shiner, schools of shiner, like almost everywhere in this canal. This is the good news. The bad news is that there are too many, you know, shiners in this canal right now. And when you have an overabundance of bait, you are throwing a lure down there that resembles the bait, right? But it's not the real thing. The fish may really just be locked on the real stuff. So this is the bad news. 
having a little bit of them is no no is good you match the hatch but when you have like gazillions of them down there you know all the bats and the picker around here i don't know if they're going to bite on the lure or even go after the lure we'll see i gotta keep walking and fishing see what happens i don't want to finish this video with just panfish i want to catch something else so stay tuned Oh, son, it's a little bass. Well, I was expecting. Oh, easy, 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 easy. I was expecting something a little bit bigger, but uh, I guess I guess we can start small today. I mean, like I always do. <laughs> you know, I like to think positive. Fishing for two and a half hours out here, catching one of these. I mean. Ain't that bad, right? This is better than nothing. You know, oh, okay. That is better than nothing, right? That is better than getting skunked. I mean, we're definitely not getting skunked today. But at least I caught one little bass, not just panfish, in this video. Let's keep fishing. This looks so perfect, even for fish to just ambush it. Like nothing. Oh, fish on. Ah, oh, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm starting to get tired now of, you know, this little red breast sunfish getting the Rapala. So aggressive, man. I'm here trying to catch some bass, some pickerel, you know, to bring some more excitement for this video. Man, I don't know about the bass and the pickerel, right? But the sunfish, they really, really love this little rapala lure. Unbelievable. Wow, so what a day. Oh, there we go. Oh boy, I saw that one coming. Came from under the weeds and then nailed the little jerk bait. I don't know what's going on with the size of these fish though. This canal. It's supposed to have some decent sized fish and yet today I haven't seen anything decent yet. Well this one inhaled my jerk bait. I may need my pliers to unhook. Oh actually oh yeah I'll need my pliers I think. That's the thing with jerk baits. Sometimes the bass they will eat it so good. Gotta do some surgery with the pliers. A little bit of twisting and they'll be fine. There we go. All right. Good to go. Man, came out from under the weeds. Inhaled the little jerk bait. But there's no size to it. So odd. I mean, my best largemouth bass from this canal was like, what, a three and a half pounds? And today I haven't seen anything above one pound. Bro... Florida wants to change shark regulations. How about Pennsylvania change the geese regulation? People say it's not an infestation. Look at this. It's infested. Well, uh, if this is not infested, I don't know what it is. Look at the amount of, the, of these folks here. And they poop everywhere, you know? Oh, man. And people feed them. I don't, uh, I'll never understand. Oh. That was, oh, that was a hit. Dang it, man. I don't know what it was, but it hit twice. Right over here. Right now. That was a, that was a nice hit, too. Maybe just some fish? It didn't feel quite like some fish, though. But maybe it was just some fish. Yeah, maybe just some fish. Oh yeah, just some fish. Ay, ay, ay. Thought it was something different, but 
I mean, don't take me wrong, it is a nice sized sunfish, but I really wished, <laughs> really wish it was something different, you know, I caught gazillions of these already today. Let me tell you something, I am a little bit perplexed. I mean, don't take me wrong, I am very happy with how the fishing session today turned out to be. I would be extremely disappointed if I took the Rapala XR jerkbait out and I didn't catch any fish, right? Meaning that we got skunked, but the expectations and the results for today, they're all out of place. When I came here to this canal this morning, I've been grinding out here for about four and a half hours. I really thought I would land a few more largemouth bass, the Micropterus salmoides. A few of them did show up in this video and land a bunch of the chain pickerel, the Ezox um, Niger. Let's just pronounce it that way, you know. And the thing is, I did see two little pickerel over here today, but that was all I saw the whole day. And instead of catching those, the main species for today was the red breast sunfish, the Lepomis auritus. And you know, folks, it's not just catching one over here, one over there, right? Little sunfish by accident wiped at the Rapala. No, let me tell you, I caught so many red breasts today, right? Which actually shows, just like I told you the story at the beginning of this video, there is an abundance, over abundance, okay? of shiners in this place and the red breast sunfish they are keyed you know they are on those shiners so when they see something like this is swimming around those shiners and then suddenly i just you know you guys saw the technique i was using right jerk jerk stop or reel and jerk once it stops the red breast sunfish thinks oh man that's an easy meal i gotta go for it and then it's like zoom and it's like fish on and it's like plash right it's a red breast sunfish unbelievable and another thing that kind of dawned on me during this video when i was just jerking my stuff around right i am extremely satisfied with how this lure works and not only that i am extremely happy that i was able to use this lure today comfortably okay with my fluorocarbon line as you guys know when you use jerk baits or bass anglers use usually use jerk baits with braided line that's because when you do use this type of jerk bait that you have to jerk you know and uh, it's called the slash jerk bait right for extra action sometimes you gotta jerk it pretty hard right and when you use fluorocarbon and monofilament the line has so much stretch to it that when you jerk it once you can feel the force of the stretch you know and that little moment when you feel the force of the stretch back maybe the moment that the fish nibbles on your lure and you may miss it right which is why people tend to use braided line braided line is almost zero stretch right three to six percent fluorocarbon is like 25 to 35 percent so i'm actually quite happy that with the smaller jerk baits you can actually use this line and jerk jerk it nicely you know jerk it comfortably uh, i'm quite pleased with it you know what next time you come to this canal i will definitely do some micro fishing i need to find out what is swimming down there to have a better sense of the you know overall ecosystem in this place i'm dying to find i've seen so many little fish and different species down there today and i don't have my micro fishing gear with me but anyways, this is it for this video. I am very satisfied with this lure, although we didn't find the bigger fish or the predatory species around the area, you know, it is a lure that I would definitely recommend, okay? The fish definitely love it. It's, uh, it doesn't dive too deep, right? So you don't get snagged very often. You just cast around the shoreline and sometimes there may just be that one fish around laying low that comes out and zoom, grabs your lure, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a lot from it. I'll bring you guys another video in two days, hopefully. Tight lines, I'll see you all next time.